Aloha and welcome to another series of Word, A Word with Ward. I'm Representative Gene Ward and we're continuing our series in interviewing community leaders. Today we are honored and privileged to have the Hawaii Kai Chamber of Commerce with us. We have the President, Jenea Self, Self yes. and Jindy French, who's the Vice President. Yes. Before we get to the Chamber, let's talk about who Jenea is. And I've had a problem remembering how to pronounce her name. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Jenea. Yes, well, many people have trouble pronouncing my name, but they never forget the face, right? Um, again, my name is Jenea, and I have uh, been in the island since 1989, moved here originally from Northern California, mm -hmm. landed on Kauai, a beautiful island mm -hmm. of Kauai. And uh, then after Hurricane Iniki, I was relocated to the Hawaii Kai area in 1994, in which mm -hmm. I was a college student at that time. Um, since then, I had left to the mainland for a little while to pursue my acting dreams and uh, dance possibilities. And you discovered were in Hollywood, you mean? Yes, I was for eight years. Uh -huh. Eight years in Los Angeles. And you can up tell and down the, the uh, people what movies you've been in. And oh, <laughs> boy. Well, you might see a couple of episodes of 90210, ER, things of, same things of that okay. nature. Um, you know, small, small day parts, nothing to write home and say, you know, hey, I've made it, but enough to keep me going, per se. Mm -hmm. But during those mid-years, uh, something clicked in me, and um, really the, the candid story was um, when you're a starving artist, as you well know, sometimes eating day to day and making rent at that time mm. can be difficult and I called my father on the phone kind of you know you can't pay my rent and you know what do I do and I want to make something of myself and he said well you better get a day job so I did and I got into real estate at that time back in uh, the early 2000 and went into mortgage finance from there into mortgage finance after a good six years of that um, then I took a turn uh, when the industry was going through its rocky phases in 2007 and jumped aboard marketing and advertising for both print and media. Mm -hmm. Which is a little bit Hollywoodish, so to speak. Uh, uh, so to speak, but I, brought it back, but I brought it back to Hawaii. That was when I returned here. I worked for Element mm. Media for four years mm -hmm. in, in marketing and advertising, and that's really how I kind of gained my uh, foot in terms of marketing and events and creating the mm. passion for entrepreneurs and uh, belonging uh, to that publication, if you will, uh, belonging to that hooey of entrepreneurs to take it to the next level is what really gave me my spark to be involved in the chamber. And then suddenly you became the president. How long have you been the president? Ooh, this is my, s this will be the uh, second year. I, I was president in 2011, mm -hmm. then 2012, and I'm currently looking for a successor to take it on uh -huh, whenever <laughs> that comes around. Maybe he or she is uh, lurking there in the TV audience. Possibly. Listening. Or possibly. you have a vice president. Let's move on to the vice president Please who do. may be uh, succeeding you as, uh, as it goes. Yes. Jindy French. Jindy, tell us a bit about your uh, background. In, in fact, Jindy is your first name, which I was yes. also as difficult to remember, G-I-N-D-I. And that comes from where, you said? It's a derivative. My mom made it up from her two best friends' name, Virginia. So we have Jin. Jin. Mm. And D. Evelyn is D. Okay, I was reading into exotic South Asia something, no. mm. maybe more. No, <laughs> what is no. It? What when, is when I went to Egypt um, mm. after... I was just 18 years old and, and I was there for about three weeks. Um, and I learned that it is sometimes a men's name. It's a fairly rare name. Gindy Only men, but it's Gindi. Oh, okay. So, and then I saw it's actually sometimes a last name in India, but again, it's kind of a rare, mm. rare thing. But mine is Gindi. It's unique in its origin. <laughs> and you're French. I mean, you're Gindi. French, <laughs> French is your last name. French is my last name. And what's the background of Jindy French? You're the vice president of the I'm chamber now. I'm the vice now. president of the chamber now. Um, also, I have been the vice president for two years. I uh, was the treasurer previously. Mm -hmm. And um, I came, I'm from Southern California. My dream was to be a rocket scientist, to be an astronaut, to That's be involved in That's the name of your company. Yeah, so you are a rocket scientist. You're the owner of Rocket Science Tutoring. Consulting. Tutoring. Rocket Science Tutoring. So um, in California, um, I pursued engineering, mechanical engineering, ocean engineering, and worked at JPL, which is the NASA facility that does all the Mars missions, for mm. 10 years. Mm -hmm. 10 years. And then we moved here, uh, my family moved here eight years ago. And um, did some consulting at UH, I've done some various things, but um, at JPL I started tutoring, I was involved in a lot of student programs, mentoring, 
And that's that's really gives me a passion. Besides that, there's not very much spacecraft design and integration here in Hawaii. Mm, not too much yet. Not too much. Well, but I was I was involved with the Hawaii Space Flight Laboratory for mm -hmm. a while, um, and very involved with them and helping them set up some facilities. But again, it's it's part time. You know, we have just passed legislation for a lunar research park yeah. on the Big Island. Isn't so that fun? Yeah, NASA <laughs> and a lot of yes. the other high tech people are zeroing in and hopefully going to locate and hire and have good paying jobs yeah. uh, on that site. Constant. So that's who the two of you are. Yes. But now that the people know who you are, many of them don't know about the Hawaii Chamber of Commerce. They probably didn't True. know there was a Hawaii Chamber of Commerce. True. Janae, you want to give us a bit of background? How Hawaii mm -hmm. itself has its own Chamber of Commerce. What the history and, Absolutely. and then we'll get into Absolutely. some activities. We are, yes, we are a young organization, a community driven, very uh, slightly separate from our large main chamber, as you well know. Uh, we started in 2007 in November. Um, we are now coming up to our sixth year in existence and I'm very happy. And that's essentially why we were a little quiet, is we wanted to make sure that we mm. had the foundation underneath us. When you're dealing with a volunteer organization, it can take some time to lay out ground rules, bylaws, policies, fundamental procedures on how things are done. Um, it also takes time to really get into the role of what you're doing and understand your purpose for the greater good of the community. Mm -hmm. It takes you some time to work with others and, and whatnot. And so we wanted to make sure that before we told everybody that we were here, that we had it right mm -hmm. underneath us. So we means how many members of the Hawaii Kai Chamber? We're currently it? at 47. 47 members. That's for a community of what, 20 to 30,000 people? That, mm -hmm. That's quite a good representation. It's not bad. And everybody's it's not a volunteer. Bad. So you are not one of the highly paid executives. You're no, a member by being not. a realtor. Yes. Uh, I know my office has a number of interns and volunteers. We say that interns get paid in pizza and gratitude. Absolutely. And that's kind of the two things that they live yes. on. Absolutely. Uh, luckily for the real estate career, it's allowed me some time to uh, be able to do the fiduciary duties that come along with uh, having the title. Um, mm -hmm. But moving into our sixth year, we are looking to start expanding on our chamber. We like the fact that we're intimate. Uh, we, do would, we would obviously love to grow our membership a bit more, but we don't want to outgrow ourselves and mm. become so large that it, you don't know each other's names. What kind of members are part of the Hawaii Chamber? I mean, they're not all realtors, obviously. No, they're, no, they're is it not. a cross-section? Is it people from just yes. the... Qu you know, we have a limited... Well, we've got four shopping centers, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be those members, or would it be people outside Absolutely. of the community, or what? It's sev thank you for asking that question. Um, it's several people. Number one, we have a few uh, medium businesses supporting us. Currently, HMAA has just come aboard, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Kaiser Permanente, who's been a long-standing mm -hmm. member. HIHR uh, has been supporting us. There are three corporate members in terms of uh, medium to larger mm -hmm. businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them are comprised of small business owners in the Eastside community, things that you'll find Seabreeze, for example, at mm. Waikai Town Center, um, Curves Hawaii from Coco Marina. Um, uh, give me another one, Hawaii Jindy. Homestay. Hawaii Homestay. Winners Camp. Winners Camp, huge proponent. Exit Realty. Exit Realty. Um, a couple of agents from East Oahu Realty, per se. So who is involved? It's really three type of demographics. Hmm. You have your well-established, but like to be involved in the community demographic. You have your uh, entrepreneur, per se, who's looking to better their business and grow their business um, and looking for ways and means to do that. Okay. Then you also have your individuals or your agents, if you will, insurance agents, um, title representation, mm. uh, real estate, um, CPAs, things of that nature. And that's kind of who comprises the membership as of now. And Jindy, if we wanted to speak to the small business people who might be looking at this and they want to become a member, what sort of prerequisites, what requirements, what dues, what What's the entry? Or they just show up and say, yeah, you're a member, it's voluntary, or there's a membership paid and there, there is a membership a application and all that stuff too, uh, right? Behind closed doors, yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, no, we have a membership application, um, and um, that can be found on our website for more information. Uh, we interview the businesses and the people involved, um, and uh, once dues are paid and applications received, it's still 
uh, the, the business or the individual needs to be cleared and approved by the board as part of our bylaws. Mm -hmm. There is that approval process. Um, so we don't hand it out like candy, mm -hmm. um, but we're not ultra exclusive either. We are very much a community-based program where you know, we want to better our businesses and we want to better our schools. We want to better the Hawaii Kai community. I know it's community-based so. because I spoke at one of your luncheons and Absolutely, had, uh, you did. at the Outback fantastic. Steakhouse. It yes, was, you did a fantastic what a great job. meal after eating that meal that I had to speak for 20 <laughs> minutes. It was, <laughs> it was really, I mean, you guys picked a, a great menu and a great uh, oh, venue. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. For uh, love to have you back keeping for the community uh, yeah. up by today. Yeah, and Outback has been very supportive and we, we have had various speakers about the community, about finance, about the economic times and how it relates to the Hawaii Kai and the Hawaii community, um, marketing. Are everything. the meetings always at Outback or your meetings are... For the most part, move? for the last couple of years, um, since we, uh, hmm. I want to make it very clear, we do not have a visual office. Okay. Okay. So uh, it's Outback, virtual. Then. It's it's kind of a virtual office. That's why we really spend a lot of time on our website, and I'll move on to that later. But talking just about Outback, they have uh, Tyler mm -hmm. uh, has been fantastic in allowing us the space and the opportunity to grow the chamber, have our meetings mm -hmm. at have such and board meetings, board meetings there, mm -hmm. and utilize uh, the space. And he donates his time to do so. And, and so does the That's staff. The community space. It's part of what I call the the Hoikai Renaissance. It when is. the dog park came in, and the for the uh, yes those who wanted to do archery, uh, mm -hmm. we, we we've got a community that's just thriving on activities. Activities and, and I passion. I see that as the Renaissance. And at the same time, that's when the chamber came on board. It's a new celebration of who we are and how proud we are of our community. Yes. Absolutely. And you know they have I love Liliha, I love Kailua. Well, everybody loves Hawaii Kai, and you guys are proof that. The business community is merging and, and, and creating a force together. But th but if the small business person is still watching, you haven't given what the dues might be if, if somebody wants to join. Oh, what might they have to, to say put that? on the table? Uh, you, you, of course, you're, I mean, you, oh, you're not, okay, you're not sure. selling anything. <laughs> okay. We're just saying if people wanted to join the Hawaii Kai Chamber of Commerce, they Absolutely. would have to pay $2 million, $1 million, or? Oh, yeah. no. no. Well, we have our three different yeah. levels. Yeah. So mm -hmm. our individuals, it's $125 for the year. That's very reasonable. Our small business is $250 for the year. And our corporate members, they come in at $500 for the year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's from January to December. And then at the end of the year, we always run a special for new memberships. Or if they come in at the end of the year, we give them that last couple months for free. And they get the, the full next year for their membership. Okay. Now let's go into chamber activities. Assuming Good. that everybody's a member already, they know how to get into the membership. Mm -hmm. What are some of the activities that you guys sponsor or that you in get involved with in the community? And uh, this is where I think you guys shine. Oh, beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we've, again, with Outback, we've, that's kind of our branding networking luncheon. Everybody's always excited. We do four quarterly luncheons a year. Okay. Moving forward into 2013, we are talking about the possibility of maybe sharing other venues, if you will. Some other restaurants are looking to get involved, and we'll open the door on that. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, But we will s always still include Outback Steakhouse. So there's your four networking luncheons. Then we also host two uh, fundraising events, per se. Uh, one for uh, is our end-of-the-year gala event, uh, usually a gala for scholarships. The other is to help fundraise for the ever most famous, and you looked fantastic that day, IDMBF, mm. Independence Day yeah, at Mount Loa Bay. That one. <laughs> the fireworks. The fireworks from Hawaii Kai. Kai. Hawaii My Kai apologies. Fireworks. But yeah. Everyone left. The only community left on a walk. Having there. fireworks. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's a struggle every year, but they do a fantastic yes, job. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And so we really are trying to uh, work towards uh, keeping that. Momentum. Momentum going, mm -hmm. thank you. Keeping that momentum going. And uh, we're also trying to work on focus groups for the next year. Mm -hmm. And we haven't gotten too far into it, but um, what I'd, we, we'd like to propose is maybe pulling back on having so many events because you will find out in the networking world that there is quite a few things to get into every single day in Oahu. Mm -hmm. And although events are wonderful and you can network, the real intimate 
fusion of our members is where we see things happen. And that is such as that small venue that you attended at the I Island Brew Coffee House where you mm. had an intimate setting and you could sit down with your chamber members and just simply talk to you each other. You had all the Senate candidates come and say mm. and answer a few questions. I thought that was terrific. You know, very comfortable, yes. non-threatening uh, yes, social setting. Yes, absolutely. Not quite so much, you know, hi, my name is, hi, my yeah. name is, but more on an intimate level of really getting to know one another. And that's mm -hmm. really how Aloha business is formed in Hawaii. And so mm -hmm. we kind of want to create that intimacy first. And that's kind of what we're working on. Hmm. Business openings. Business opening. We do a fantastic, thank you for bringing well, you that up. We cut ribbons or? Uh, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. We do. Absolutely. We cut, we cut ribbons, have, have introductions to the community. In fact, that's how we met initially. When we Petco. went to Walgreens and Petco, yes. there was a Grand ribbon opening. cutting ceremony. Absolutely. And okay, that's, uh, okay, now that's ringing. So you do that for any of the businesses that are either members or non members or? Say, uh, say someone wants to become a member and they're just getting ready to go into the Hawaii Kai Shopping Center and they want to capitalize mm. on their visibility of their new opening. Well, on top of whatever the shopping center is going to do for them, they might want to call the Hawaii Kai Chamber of Commerce. We will, if they would like to become members, offer their window decal, proclamation, mm. bring mm. in, we, we never promise, but we do our best to reach out to the community, the media, the press, whether it be the news teams, East mm. Oahu mm. Sun. That's right, you're Hollywood, you, can, you know how to get your link. Just a little bit. Just a li they don't always answer my call, uh, but I do my best <laughs> to put it out there. And you said earlier that you're going to get to the website. What What is the website? What's the www. Okay. H i k a i c o c dot com. H i. There it is on the screen. There For it those is. of you who can't remember, it, like myself, Hi Kai Ko. Chamber of Commerce. Hi Kai Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and the website has the membership on it. Is is you get all the oh, members, the board, so people want to know who is getting involved, who who are the other people involved? Oh yes, absolutely. Here here's <coughs> the thing. The great thing about being a part of our, our our website is something that we can offer the members. Again, going off of that same example of the gentleman or the, the store owner who's gonna come into the Hawaii Kai shopping center. Yeah. Um, they can put their logo on our website. They can send us mm. a web ad to have on our website. They yeah. can send us commercials. We have YouTube capabilities. So we have a lot of progressive tools that we offer our members to maximize their exposure of their branding, okay? Mm. It's not instant ROI, but it's exposure and visibility that they normally would not have. And that's really what we try to provide in terms of the business storefront. After that, what you get out of the chamber is simply what you put into it. Mm. It's does, passion based. Does the chamber have an image or a plan for Hawaii Kai? And, uh, and, I, and I'm going to lead you into something that's Please do. obviously an issue that my office feels very strongly about. Yes. Uh, the Great Lawn. Mm. And I know there's a lot of potential uh -oh. members from the Hawaii Kai Chamber of Commerce who might want to look at it, but a strip mall across from Manolo Bay is something that, generally speaking, the feedback has been rather negative. Rather negative. And I would agree. I, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, that's a personal opinion. I, I don't know if I want to speak on the, mm -hmm. the chamber as a whole, mm -hmm. but I know I personally, uh, having been a part of Hawaii Kai since 1994 and seen a lot mm. of the growth that has come into there, I think we would like to concentrate, e if, if I was uh, uh, If you were the president that, of the Chamber of Commerce. If I was looking at this, <laughs> I would really try to maximize our current shopping centers and current yeah. space open before looking at breaking new ground. Speaking of which, uh, Jean, you got any examples for the new, uh, quote, to be improved uh, Coloma mm -hmm. Valley Shopping Center? Well, actually, I just moved down the street from there. I, oh, I relocated new, new from uh, from the Kamilawiki area over to Kalama well, Valley. Okay, I'm um, talking about your neighborhood now. <laughs> 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 um, I would love for that area to be revitalized, um, but I would be concerned if it was revitalized using further housing development mm. or... Uh, There's rumor that that may be a fallback yeah. if they can't get the retailers and the small business mm -hmm. community to step well, up. Kamehameha you know, Schools Bishop Estate is open to all kinds of suggestions. but I, You know, I'm not an um, expert down there, but um, several years ago, four or five years ago maybe, when I had dinner um, in that area, there's a great Thai restaurant. Um, and we just talked to them, you know, what's going on with this area, et cetera. And um, I learned that they were on a month-to-month -month lease and have been for a long time. 
and that was astounding. They've been there as for a, years. As a business owner, well, so. I guess they're looking to sell or do something different with the property, but as a business owner, not having even having a year lease, I was constantly like, what am I going to do? Oh, you know, you're always thinking about, do mm. I have to do move I my business? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going to happen to my employees? Lack of security. It's just, yeah, uncertainties uh, of wow, the I would yeah. never, and um, I had a business that could have gone into that shopping center as well, but there's no way that I would move my business there on a month-to-month -month tennessee that was just yeah that's uh, abhorrent. A bit <laughs> I mean, like wow yeah. so now this is you know uh, again this was several years ago i was just talking to the uh, proprietor there so uh, i never contacted the um the owner um but it would be fantastic if there were small businesses mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. like a little convenient shop or or something and I, and i'd love to see you know koa pancake house if you're listening <laughs> second location <laughs> right down the road look <laughs> in the camera make your plug <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes they're not members yet no <laughs> i know well they should be <laughs> um, but um i i definitely think yeah. some things can go into there to improve mm. that uh that area if Commitment Schools Bishop Estate wanted to elicit your help in getting the word out about what kind of tenants they may look may, may be looking for, this just comes to mind as you're speaking about what otherwise is a revitalization of Kalama Valley, of which has been dormant yes. in that shopping center for mm -hmm. years and years and years. Yes. So suggestions and networking that you guys have could be uh, quite yeah. quite helpful. Definitely, we we definitely be open to that. Another uh, question on, a, on an advisory level is that. My background is small business. I did yes. entrepreneur training in 10 different countries with mm -hmm. Dr. Connie Haley and I. We did basically business plan writing for 3,000 people. And my wife and I were retailers at the Royal Wine Hotel for 15 That's years. Right. So you mentioned that. Making the rents and the, mm -hmm. the bottom line meet yep. is, is a very important issue. And being that I'm now co chair of the Small Business uh, Caucus, what advice from your members do you have about what the needs are, either legislatively or Otherwise, what are some of the things that people are saying, either positive or negative, about what's going on? And what the, otherwise, it's a tough economy. Things have not mm -hmm. turned around it yet. Is. What it is. what sense do you get from your members or your own businesses, or what sort of the expression of the small business community and the state of the art, if you will, of the economy and how things some, are going? Some terror about that GE tax thing that was yes. that, that meeting. You want to talk about the tax review commission? <laughs> 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 I, was say, I don't know, know, know if we really want to talk about it. But we, 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 that's a whole your body session. language shows me that there's <laughs> not a very good uh, reaction to that. Yes. Um, no. Uh, no, no. I'll, I'll say this. It's, it's like this. The GE tax and the health care reform are literally the two biggest issues on anyone's table. We're 90% small business. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, we were just talking about this the other day. As much as I love technology, with the wave of technology today, if you are uh, a sole proprietor of a business, you have to have your hands in so many different areas that it's almost impossible right now to have the kind of time that you need to devote all those areas to secure that business. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Meaning that making the appointments, securing the accounts, making sure your Twitter is updated, how many times did you Facebook, you know, being behind the multitasking computer, multitasking, understanding marketing yeah. and ROI, not just business. A lot of people who have business degrees per se don't even really think about planning for an advertising budget and don't understand branding and marketing and how mm -hmm. you have to allocate those certain dollars to get going. So you really have to be such a well-rounded person today in entrepreneurship because mm -hmm. it demands so much more than it did yesterday. You have to be brave. And well, you're I think, risk takers. Yes. I mean, uh, that's the, the money brave. you put on Absolutely. your hours, your time, your reputation. Absolutely. And then you can create a catch-22. So then you create some success. And now you're larger than what you can handle. And that's what a lot mm. of successful business owners are now falling into, is that they're so busy they can't take on anymore, but they're tapped out. They can't mm. help their community. They can barely get to their kid's soccer game on time mm. because they're overloaded in the business that it takes to keep running. That's the catch-22 so quandary I that, that I hear on a day-to-day -day level of what's going on. So I take the, uh, the message is you're not too happy with the Tax Review Commission saying the G tax increase to 5% is totally unacceptable. Uh, uh, you were mentioning about the pension tax or increasing the corporate tax is another yes, proposal uh, they put on the yeah. table. And um, I haven't heard tax. too much from that. So soda tax, people do talk about, but um, primarily what, what has everyone really scared is the G tax. We already lost uh, many of the exemptions, you know, last year, mm -hmm. um, you know, for subcontracting and, mm -hmm. and other things. Um, and um, yeah, that's just a burden to bear, you know, health cost 
are incredible healthcare costs, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. providing for that for every employee. Yes. Well, it's survival is success then, uh, as in many businesses, just making it through particularly these hard times. Yes. I'm reminded that adjacent to Outback is one of your neighbor organizations run by yes. a senator. Yes. Uh, small business, Smart Business Hawaii is next door. Do you guys have any collaboration or overlap or just? Yes and no. Yes, we do on several things. I know small business, um, uh, the Small Business Administration is also a, a large component of IDMB. Uh, some of their mm -hmm. members are also on yeah. board with the Independent State of Mount Bay, if I'm not mistaken. I, I believe they yeah, are. Darling. Yes, Darlin. Thank you. Um, and so from that sense, yes, we do have support. We would like to build stronger ties moving forward in the years ahead. But again, that goes back to our foundation. You don't want to create these alliances that you can't p make promises on. Mm. Do you follow me? Solid so ground. We got to have solid ground first, and I would say um, what would help initiate that more is more community involvement, more business owners that have passion for their community that are willing to roll up their sleeves and not just have the ideas. Please understand, Jean, we have ideas out to 2018. Oh, it's um, the facilitators yeah. and the doers and the initiators that we're looking for in order to carry we and have execute. Many ideas, but very few minutes left to complete our program. Oh, wow. We only have okay. enough for our, a kind of a closing comment. Uh, do you have anything, uh, Jindy, that we didn't mention that should be Sorry, mentioned? Yes, You've got 30 please. seconds. Uh, 30 seconds. Um, please join us in supporting our schools. Yes. Um, okay. We, we, get into that we are minute. looking at, you know, um, back to school supplies. Um, and we also yearly raise money for a scholarship for Kaiser High School and also for each of the schools in the Kaiser Complex District. So each of the elementary school, New Valley, et cetera, they receive a small amount of funds from us. And as more people are involved and come help me, I'm on the scholarship committee, yeah. um, mm. help me raise funds, et cetera, then we can, we can really pour that into our community. And as a parent, I think that's incredibly important. Jania, any closing? Remarks? Closing arguments or statements. Um, other than that, I, I, I just have to say I'm very blessed to have a group of people to work with, such as Jindy, our board, I it's a tough job, and um, somebody's got to do it, and, and I think our chamber has the heart. We have the mm. heart and the energy, and uh, if you'd like to become involved in the heart of the community, that's why you should get involved, no, not about what you're going to get out of it. Is mm. that there's a group of people that actually care today, and that's hard to find anywhere. And thank you, too, for caring enough to come on to the program, A Word with Ward. I'm Representative Gene Ward. We've got to run. Thank you for viewing, and aloha. Aloha. aloha.